Hello and welcome to the Bamson Zone. In this video, we're going to take Pat through a lesson to help take his game to a whole new level. Let's get into it. So Pat, thanks very much for coming down. Just tell everyone a little bit about yourself as a player. Sure, no problem, Dean. Um, I'm mainly a four-core player, so I like to get involved with the net. What I'm really struggling with at the moment is how I transition from the mid-court to the forecourt. So perfect. So Pat is someone that's very happy when he's already at the net, but today's session is going to be all about how he transitions from the mid-court to the forecourt. So this is a very important area for net players to make sure they don't get isolated at the back of the court. So let's take a look. Okay, so Pat, for this first routine, what we're going to look at is the shot was going to come into your forehand side in the okay. mid-court. Yep. I want you to hit a straight drive down okay. the line. Yep. Then a block's going to come towards that, and this is what I want you to really focus on, this pressing forwards and trying to be as aggressive as you can coming in. And then you'll either play a straight kill or a soft net shot. Okay. The tactical emphasis of this routine are that both pairs are in attack formation, with one player in the mid-court and one player at the net. Pat is going to hit a forehand drive into space, and it's all about how he reacts and how he presses forward after that shot. Okay, so Pat, we've tried the routine now and we've noticed three things that we want to try and focus on for the rest of this session. Okay. The first one is the drive. So what's happening at the minute is you're moving laterally onto the drive, which yep. means all your body weight and momentum is going sideways, yep. and yet we're wanting to try and hit a fast, punchy shot straight down the line. Okay, so do I need to be coming a bit further forward when so I'm... So I want you to try and feel like you're moving more diagonally towards the post, yep. which would A, cut down the distance that you have to travel towards the net, yep. but also create a lot more power with your body weight moving into the shot. Okay, no problem. So Pat, we're going to try the routine again, and I just want you to focus on this drive for now. So really try and feel like you're moving in towards the shuttle, and we'll work on that first. Okay, sure. Okay, so focus on stepping into that drive, Pat, okay? okay. Same again, body into it. Keep leading with that racket in front. So Pat, that was much better on the drive. You really started to move into the shot. How did, how did you find it? Well, I felt that it was able to give me a, a lot more power because I was coming forward. So I felt more confident with the quality of the drive. Exactly, you could see that the pace was so much higher. And now the next thing we're gonna look at is how you move in after your drive. So what's happened now is as you're creating more power, actually you're then stopping still and having to create all this momentum again as you come into the net. So I want you to hit this drive and start to press forward straight away. Okay. I mean, the, the reason I do, I guess, is because I'm not really sure what they're going to do, so I don't really know what shot's going to come at me. And I think this is something that, that people struggle with a little bit, is you have to remember the shot is that there's a space down on this side. Particularly if you're playing a right-hander, they're going to be late down their back end. So when they're in your stretch position, they don't really have every shot to hit. And if we hesitate, we let them get away with this floaty block to the net. The other thing is, as a net player, your yeah. whole emphasis is to try and get forwards. So if okay. you go early enough, yeah. your partner can see that and react. But okay. if we stay side by side, nothing really happens. Okay. Okay, so kind of hit and go. Hit and go, as okay. quick as you can. With okay, Pat, so that was much better with the drives that time, but now I really want you to feel, once you've hit that shot and you've played into space, try and make sure you're pressing forward straight away. Don't wait for David to hit. Okay. Go, go, go. That's it. Try not to wait. Hit and press. And then go, go, go. Good press. Much better. Go. Nice. Nice and early on the net now, Pat. So Pat, much better again. We've really got the first two points sorted now. Okay. Drive, you're moving in much more, and now you're trusting yourself and going straight away. The last thing we need to look at is your racket carriage as you're coming forwards. 
Okay. Okay, so you mean I should have it up as soon as I've hit the drive, back it up. Exactly, because okay. you're hitting a nice flat shot, the only direction that your opponent can play is up. So by having your racket down, as you're coming forwards as quick as you are, you're still having to bring this up and then make contact with the shuttle. You can save yourself time as you're moving forwards, really feel like you're leading with this racket and this will give you a lot less to do when you make contact with the shot of the net. Okay, okay, no problem. Okay. So much better, Pat. The drive now good and you're pressing forward straight away. The last thing I want to try and focus on is to really try and feel like your racket is up and leading you as you're coming forward to the net. Okay. That's such a good shot. It's showing me who's the fastest, isn't it? Pat looks fantastic as well. <laughs> okay. Much better. Forwards. Nice, Pat. Get that racket moving flat. Better. Okay. Well in, Pat. Okay, so well done, Pat. Much better progress there. So just to remind, we looked at three things. First one, making sure we're moving forwards onto the drive to make sure we get a lot more body weight moving forwards, which yep. equals more power. Mm -hmm. Number two was trying to trust yourself to move forward straight away after hitting the drive to maintain momentum. Yep. And number three was just making sure that racket carriage is staying up as you're moving it. How did you find it? Yeah, I mean, it's really good because I found that, I guess it was a bit easier for me to, a lot easier to get the attack. And then I think the quality of my kills at the net was, was much better than I've been getting earlier. Exactly, and I think a part of that definitely would be the racket carriage. The more you have to do with the racket, the less likely you're going to have that consistency on the shot and the net. So well done, much better. Okay. So we're going to move on now to a different tactical situation. That one we looked at was where there's one player in the mid-core, one player net, more attack formation. Now we're going to be a little bit more in defence formation. So at one play either side of the court. So how this is going to differ is that once you've come and hit your drive, yeah. because there's no longer the space, it may mean that you have to hold here a little bit more to cover the drive and have enough time to react to a shot rather than just running forwards. Okay, so is that how I decide whether I'm running in and up based on the formation af after I've played my shot? You're always trying to feel like you're reacting to where your opponent is sometimes on the court. So if they're stretched and off balance that like we just looked at, yeah. there's no reason for you to hang back. You can take the initiative and move forward. This time they're going to feel that like they're a little bit more on balance. Yeah. Um, so you might just have to hold your ground a little bit, but it's not to say that once they play the block, that you're still trying to move onto it as quick as you possibly can. Still think about that movement speed and leading with that racket up. Okay. Right, get that racket up off that drive, Pat. Good. So, Pat, I just want to offer one more shot when you're at the front of the court. So now, because you're not naturally able to follow the shot as much as the tactical situation before, yeah. you might find that you're not as high as you were before because you're having to pause. Yeah. So rather than still trying to force a kill when you're slightly below the net, you can sometimes feel like you're turning the shuttle into space because you now have a lot more space here because the defender on the cross is a little bit more towards the middle so you have a little bit more of a gap okay unlucky good unlucky Okay, so one more thing, Pat, that I've noticed when you're in the mid-court is your footwork. You're hitting your forehand drive, and rather than staying forwards on this right leg, which is much easier for you to move in, yeah. you're starting to bring it backwards, probably because you're looking for the lift. Okay. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Even though this is a worry for you, you still have a lot of time because the shuttle's traveling really high, and you've got time to move back. Your emphasis as a net player still needs to be trying to move forward as much as you can. Okay. okay? Yep. Okay. Better. So still look forwards. Unlucky, unlucky. And when that starts to get level with the tape pad, don't feel like you have to try and kill that down. Okay. Try and use the back tram lines. You do have a lot of space, and if you feel like that's not an option, then maybe play try and play soft. Okay. Yeah. Uh, come on. Nice, much better. Into it. Okay. 
So, what a lesson. Some really good improvements there, Pat. How did you find it? Um, it's good. It's interesting. I've always felt like when I play soft, I know it's easy enough for me to, to come in. I've kind of struggled to know what to do with uh, when, I'm, I'm, when I'm driving it. So I feel like I'm a lot more confident about doing that. A um, bit better when I've played it into space and I can follow it forward. I think I've got a bit more work to do when I'm holding my ground. But at least I feel a lot clearer on what I should be doing. Oh uh, yeah, and you completely looked like a whole different player afterwards. Really kind of dominant on moving forward at the net. And I know that's obviously a place you really want to be strong at. Yeah, yes. So just to round up that session, we've covered three points when moving from the midcourt into the net. Number one, make sure when you're driving the shot, you're trying to move forwards into the shot. Number two, if your opponent's off balance, try and press forward straight away. And number three, maintain a good racket carriage to help you plan a shot nice and early at the net. We also covered two different tactical situations about when to press in straight away and when to hold your ground. So the reason we worked on two different tactical situations is because sometimes we find that people just work on the shots alone and when it comes to the match play aren't sure when to use them or how to use them. It's really important when you're training to make sure you have a clear understanding of when that shot is needed. We really hope you enjoyed this lesson and you learned something from it. If you want to see more content just like this, please hit the subscribe button and make sure you go and give us a follow on Instagram.